Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this series. Uh, today we're going to continue with The Lighthouse. I know a lot of you guys are very, um, what's the word, excited about this series, right? So uh, this week's, it's unless we have any like important news or important announcement, this week's all going to be all about The Lighthouse. However, I'm going to make it so that every single day, I know we're in, in, I believe this is part 17, so it might seem like you might not be learning a lot of new stuff, but believe me, I will show you some nice uh, things here and there. So today, since it's Sunday, I'm going to keep it simple. Well, it's Sunday for me right now. I'm recording in Sunday uh, for the Monday video. And we're going to talk about how to properly export objects from Maya into uh, Unreal Engine and how to set up the collision boxes because we don't want to have su a super complex collision that what we had yesterday. Um, and we want to make sure that our character doesn't go in places where we don't want to, right? So the first thing that you should do is you should only export things that are the same material and if they're not going to be moving on the world, like if, if they're going to be static, you're not going to be destroying them or doing anything, then combining them into a single mesh is better than having a lot of different meshes. Why is this? Because every single mesh right now, like every single uh, block here of, of wood, for instance, has its own transformation node. And that, that's information that in this case Maya needs to remember. And uh, when we move this into Unreal, Unreal will have to take that into consideration. We combined everything yesterday, but now that we're going to start splitting, we're not going to do piece by piece. We're going to do the whole thing, right? So I'm going to start with the frames, like all of the frames. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to use my uh, Control and Alt to delete all of the frames. You, you can see that I'm like the frames from the house, I'm keeping them as separate pieces. That's important. I am going to keep the stairs as separate pieces as well. Of course, the nets are going to be separate pieces. All of these wooden blocks right here. So here's where finding like the proper angle and just selecting or deselecting things with a, a, a box is going to be a little bit better. So all of this, all of this. Let's so deselect those guys. Let's deselect the barrel. That little... Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to have these guys in the... No, I, I want them separate. I'll show you why. I'll, I'll show you why I want this little guy separate. So the stairs are going to be separate as well. There we go. So be very careful here with the selection. Uh, I had a teacher. I think I've, I've mentioned this before. That mentioned that in three D, in the three D industry, like sixty percent of our time goes into selecting like properly selecting things, properly deselecting things, like making sure things are where they're supposed to be. So there we go. Let's, let's check this out. And let's see if we have like anything that we don't want. Doesn't seem like it. Oh, well, we have a couple of things like this guy and uh, like this stairs right there. So the stairs are actually, um, I'm not sure if I, sh I should keep the stairs or not. No, I think I'm going to do the stairs separately just because it's, it's easier to create a static mesh. I'll show you what I mean by that. So yeah, everything, I will have a couple of these guys right here. So now I'm just going to shift and select everything else. And as you can see, everything that I selected previously is now going to be deselected. Just click, click, and there we go. Now, here's where it's very useful to have a another copy, right? So I'm going to call this lighthouse just 002.ma. And in case I ever need to go back to where things were split to do a couple modifications, I still have a copy, right? And all of these guys, I'm going to combine just like that. Like no, no big deal. I'm going to delete history. Uh, you can center the pivot point. It's not really important because once you export this into Unreal, the pivot point will reset to 000, zero, zero to the origin of the world inside of Maya. So wherever the origin of the world is, which I believe it's like down here or something, haven't seen the, <laughs> the grid in a long time, must be over there. Uh, that's where it's gonna it's gonna know, or that's where this thing's gonna be positioned. Now the important thing here, and this is super super important, is the names and the materials. So as you can see here, we actually have three materials here, and that's that's a no no. Like we shouldn't have any like Lambert material. So that means that at some point here, I selected something that still has a Lambert material, and that's not something that I want. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go into my hyper shade, and I'm gonna go into my Lambert one. I'm going to right click and select select objects uh, in initial shading group. And then here I should find something like there must be something that is like hidden over here because the material slot is there. I can't see it though. Sometimes when you're using a, a standard like um, Arnold standard materials, sometimes it, it kind of like keeps the, the, the Lambert. So, okay, I'm going to leave it and, and we'll see in Unreal if we can uh, delete that one. Uh, but as you can see, these two materials, now they're going to be important. Like the names of the materials are actually going to be really important. It's the wood beams and the tileable wood, both of the materials that we uh, pre previously used. Okay, so I'm going to grab this thing. I'm going to rename this. Let's call this M 
um, what would be a good name? Let's call this wood uh, structure. There we go. Select the object, file, export selection. And we're going to export this in the asset folder, Lighthouse. And let's create a new folder. I'm going to create this new folder. I'm going to call this uh, UE underscore ready assets. And again, this is, this is one of those things. Uh, a lot of my students struggle with this concept, but it's very important when you're working in a production pipeline that everyone knows what things are going in and out of the engine sort of the project. So by having a lot of organization, a lot of folders, a lot of versions of objects, it's easier to pinpoint where errors or, or problems are and just like fix them. OK, so that's why I'm, I'm really, really stressing that even if I need to have like five different versions of an object, I'm going to have I'm going to have it. So here I'm going to call this um, wood structure. Usually, it's recommended that you use uh, SM, which is a static mesh, it's the flag. So SM, wood structure, and I can use like Lighthouse. So I'm going to use LH. That's going to be like, like my flag for the Lighthouse. So I know that this specific wood structure is for the Lighthouse. As you can see, I'm exporting as an FBX. I don't need to export uh, animation. And the XB FBX will export the material information, the material slot. Okay. So I actually changed, as you can see, the name here to uh, wood structure. Hopefully, that doesn't. Uh, mess up anything. Let's go to our scene right here. And now uh, we actually don't need this one. So I'm just going to grab this guy right here and delete. And I'm going to go here to the content. And again, as I mentioned, organization is everything. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this Lighthouse. Or I can just say LH, which is going to be like my flag from now, from now on. LH underscore uh, assets. So I know that all of my assets are going to be inside of this folder. Let's go here. Let's create uh, or let's import right click and then import to uh, which is that specific uh, path and just uh, go into our UI ready assets and import this one. And as you can see, we do want to combine meshes. That's important. Uh, and now we do want to import materials. So here on the create materials, I'm going to create uh, new materials and I'm going to say import all. And if everything uh, worked correctly, we should have one static mesh, which we're going to see shortly, and a couple of materials. So yeah, as you can see, we have the static mesh. And you can see that we actually got some of the textures that were connected inside of Maya because the FBX knows where these textures are, which is perfectly fine for us because we're going to be using them eventually to, to build our materials. It actually already connected the, the materials, so the, the diffuse and the roughness. And we have this thing right here. So if I drag and drop this thing into the scene, you can see that it's not where it's supposed to be. This is where the pivot point is super important because if I just zero out this location, I should be able to have this exactly where it's supposed to be. Uh, as you can see, it, it's not exactly there. So let's take a look here and make sure that, okay, it is it is completely zeroed out. Huh, that's weird. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, it could be that the conversion was wrong, which in this case shouldn't be that much of a problem. In theory, I should only need to rotate this 90 degrees. And I think the option here is to move this thing um, 500 units up. Let's try this for now just because I want the character to be close to the element. I mean, he was supposed to be standing on the ground, so that looks roughly like the ground. So uh, technically, we did the export and import correctly. I'm, I'm not sure why the, the values were a little bit different, because we did, um, what's the word? We did change this. Now you can see that we missed a couple of beams right here. I'm, I'm just going to skip over that uh, for now. Um, and let's talk about the collision mesh, OK? So if I double click this guy right here, uh, this is the static mesh that's imported into the element. And the, I need to check what the collision is. So let me see, show, where is it? Here, simple collision. So as you can see, this simple collision is what Unreal thought was the best option for me for this piece, which is completely horrible, as you can see. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to go into this area because uh, the collision is just like all over the place. Now, there are, there is an option. Some of you guys who are a little bit more um, into the like the programming side of things, you might have done collision boxes uh, in Maya or in Blender or in other 3D packages. Personally, uh, I've done them here inside of uh, Unreal, which work very nice. So I'm going to grab the object, go into collision, and say uh, remove collision. So there's no collision right now. And then I'm going to go collision, and I'm going to start adding collisions. So for instance, let's add a box simplify collision. And this ones, we can actually scale them 
and uh, position them where we want the collision to be. So let's start with like just like the generic shape of the object, like uh, like this floor right here. Now, the only problem is if we try to scale this, uh, it's snapping and it's because of this thing right here. So I need to deactivate that so that I have like free free use on this thing. And that way I should be able to, to find the proper place. So I'm gonna go to a uh, right view and then I'm gonna move the collision box down. There we go, see that? So that's right there flat at the floor. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. You can see roughly the area here. Probably a little bit more. Just a tad bit. There we go. That's, that's pretty nice. Let's go right view. Now let's go to the front view. And here we're also gonna scale this because this is like the first base or the or the, the main platform, right? So all of this area right here. Sometimes if you if you go like a little bit over, a little bit uh, beyond, unless this is, it's a very like exact or physics like exact physics game or something, it's fine. That's when you get a couple of clippings and stuff. Let's go top view. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, we have a little bit of an issue here on this area. And uh, there's two things that we can do. We could add walls, like invisible walls on this area so that the character can jump through that area. Or we're gonna have to scale this for this like main area over here. Let's scale a little bit more. Get it as close as possible, there we go. And then duplicate it, so Control D. Or sorry, Alt. You're gonna press Alt and then drag with your arrow, uh, with your just like the movement tool, which is W, and that should get it uh, where you want it. And now we scale this as well. Let's move this forward, and there we go. Look, that's really, really close. Perfect. So we save this, and now if we were to place our character on this area, like on this like upper platform right here, and hit play, you're gonna see that we can perfectly walk on top of it, right? Right now, if I jump here, woo, no collision, so the character just flies away. Uh, but that's that's a very easy way to, to generate collisions, and the cool thing about this method is that this collision, since they're just boxes, they're super cheap. They're just six-sided phasers, six-sided blocks, and it's very easy for Unreal to properly like calibrate all of these things. Now, you might be wondering, what what could we do with like the stairs? Like I, I said I was gonna remove all of the stairs, but let's say we have the stairs. Like How we would solve that? Well, first, let's do this little platform over here. I'm just gonna grab this guy again. Again, W. Alt and drag, it's very similar to ZBrush. Just scale this down a little bit. Let's go again to right view. You can use the shortcuts. I, I normally don't use the shortcuts here inside of uh, inside of uh, Unreal. I don't know those ones. It's, a, <laughs> it's such a, it's, it's difficult. I'm pretty sure you guys uh, uh, sympathize with my, with my feeling that there's so many like 3D packages that learning the, the shortcuts for everyone, every single one of them, it's, it can be a little bit tricky, right? Like imagine having to learn uh, Maya, Blender, ZBrush, Marmoset, like everything. That's why having a standard would be like ideal, right? But you can't have everything, at least not all of the times. So let's make this a little bit smaller. Again, trying to to make sure that the character can't like jump out of this area. This is where in games you sometimes have access to areas that you shouldn't have because the collision boxes are not as tight and, and you're able to like jump or or go across or clip the character through through certain areas and, and you get this sort of effect. So there we go. That one that one's fine. Let's just push it a little bit forward. You can also remove this one right here, which is the uh, movement snap and it's gonna give you a little bit more control again. This is the rotation snap. So removing those snaps will allow you to to modify and place these things correctly. Let's do another control D and here's where the stairs come into place because for the stairs, we're actually gonna be doing uh, this sort of like a ramp shape. Because I don't believe we have a ramp. Yeah, no, there's no ramp. So we're gonna have a ramp. Oh wait, I forgot to duplicate this one. Okay, Alt, drag, there we go. Like let's find the proper like width first. And as you can see, collision boxes can interact between each other. Like that's that's not gonna be a real issue. You can, what else can we change? Uh, I was trying to say, because I think that the scale at which we're working is, is making a little bit difficult to find like the perfect spot. That, that seems to work fine. Let's go really thin here and quite thin here. There we go. 
and usually like a like a 20 degree like inclination should be more than enough there's actually a setting and this is this is where where there's a couple of games that i've seen that do a great job with stairs i'm not sure if you guys play uh genshin impact uh i i played it i haven't played it since the anniversary uh but i did play it for a while earlier this year and um and i was surprised by how they managed to do the the stair interaction with the characters because it actually looks like the characters are stepping on each specific step most of the times like this is the the way to solve it let's bring or get rid of that one to again get like the proper inclination very important that we don't have any clipping like up there i'll rather have it like down here on the ground than up there there we go just grab this guy alt duplicate and do the same thing over here that's it let's save and now if we were to hit play technically we should be able to go down the stairs there you go see there is clipping as you can see there is clipping uh but uh, it's it's unless we want to do like each specific step which could be done um this is one a very elegant solution I, I, I would say now we're missing this one that's the last one that we're missing and then we're going to talk about the textures which actually they look good so did we did we not tile the texture i think we didn't tile the texture so yeah in this case i'm just going to do this and it's just a matter of scaling there we go Uh, as close as possible there we go and then just move this thing down so it's as again as close as possible and and i insist this is more important when you have like a game that's very physics based and and everything has to be like super exact like imagine you have i don't know like a target you need to shoot like far away in the mountain like a barrel and the barrel has like a very tight hitbox then, well, it's going to be very cool for the character because when you hit it, you're going to feel like you actually achieved something. You have like a super big box, even though it's super far away, then it might not be the best idea. In this case, since it's a scenario and we just want to walk through it, having this sort of like big collision boxes is, is more than enough. And there we go. So this is the, the process, guys. This is the, the basic uh, thing. We we're still need to add a couple more uh, collision boxes, but I don't want this video to run super, super long. This is how we are going to be setting every single thing up. Now, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about a very specific topic, so you don't want to miss the video. Make sure to like, hit the little bell button so you get the notification. We upload every single day. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, instance materials and how to create layered materials. Uh, so remember the um, the cliff that we did that had, like, layered materials, and we're going, to, we're going to be using masks to blend between them? I'm going to be showing you how to do that, okay? So, yeah, hang on tight. Uh, make sure to, if you want, this weekend, this next weekend, uh, December 18th, and 19th we're gonna have our portfolio review so submissions are open all the way until this friday 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 the 17th make sure to check the link down below uh if you want to submit your work uh you can leave an art station link you can leave like renders anything that you want you can leave it there we're gonna be deleting all of those once the submissions pass uh to wait for the next submission and yeah christmas is right around the corner i'm preparing a little surprise for you guys so stay tuned make sure to give us a like share subscribe and i'll see you guys tomorrow we're very close to eighteen thousand, i believe also that's another big news i forgot to mention we're like a hundred subscribers far from from eighteen thousand. we should do something special right give us suggestions give us suggestions in the comments on what you, what should we do when we hit 18,000 uh, subscribers. So yeah, that's it, guys. Have a good one. Uh, good week, everyone. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.